Uh, hey everybody, welcome back to the Quiet Riot Show, where we talk about men's mental health, among a bunch of other things, and um, we have a lovely guest for us. I won't, uh, I won't get there quite yet, but uh, just to remind everybody, we are not professionals at this. Actually, our guest, I would consider a professional at some of this, but <laughs> yep. we are not professionals at this, and uh, we're just two guys or three guys today just talking about... Being men in today's world and our stories and our struggles and uh, anything we say, if it's good advice to you, great. If it's not, we're not legally bound to uh, give advice. So <laughs> let's leave it there. Today we have uh, Glenn Damon. So if you're from Manitoba, chances are you've heard his name before. Um, if you're not from Manitoba, you might still have heard his name before. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome here, Glenn. Thank welcome. you. Thanks, guys. Um, Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you for being here. Um, one of the things we do on the show is we do a quick check-in uh, with each other. So we use a number system, 1 to 10. How's How are you doing? So, Tommy, what number are you today? Or the last since last time? Yeah, I'm a I'm a hard nine. I just Holy came, shit. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, I came back from, uh, from the lake had a had two days of just doing nothing um i wasn't drinking this weekend i'm still doing the the full reset so and you're still a nine i'm still a nine yeah <laughs> <laughs> otherwise i would have been would have been a 10 <laughs> but no you know it's um it was a really very much needed time off from um work household reality it was we were just out there went for walks with the kids uh just me and my wife went for a walk together uh we had a little falling out last week so it was just nice that we could get away what'd you do um uh, it's i'm gonna get into it maybe later <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah no it, no it was just and, and since we've um uh, my episode i talked about how we've learned with my wife to communicate now if there's something that we don't agree with um this was a real good example that there was certain things that we disagreed with and uh and we kind of stopped instead of like getting into a screaming match or yelling match um we said okay you know what we don't have time for this right now but we need to find some time to actually discuss what happened and we actually managed to do that right now at the lake we we're sitting on the beach looking at the sunset talking about it and we you know hashed things out and it was just uh overall much needed relax and catching up with the wife actually so it was awesome good. and the kids as well so good. yeah i'm feeling great and we came home and hopped in the pool too so i'm feeling refreshed yeah you're having a hell of a yeah last few days absolutely good yeah you. yeah good how about you. yourself uh seven okay i'd say i'm a seven which is as i've established before kind of my average i sit pretty steady at a seven um Still doing the same reset, no booze, whatever thing with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually had a super productive weekend. So okay. me and the wife got into like spring, late spring cleaning, I guess it would be at this point. But like got the gazebo set up. I needed a workspace. I haven't had an office for a while. And I've been working at the dining room table, which for me is a fucking nightmare. Because I got a dog <laughs> yeah. and a daughter and a wife. And like if you're in the space with others, they will inevitably talk to you and interrupt yep. and I like to try and stay focused while I'm doing work so that was a challenge so her and I kind of made a plan and until I can find an office to rent somewhere we uh we set up an area in the basement and I'm going to put some dividers up and whatever at least yeah. sort of create some actual physical separation yep. which will I think help my mental ability to separate from being in the home yeah and you well glenn you work a lot on the road but i'm sure you have an office at home yes, you've probably 100%. been working out of an office at home for years uh yeah i mean when i was uh full-time in the auto industry i uh you know i had an office at the uh dealership location yeah. but i've always because of my 10th degree consulting i've always had uh an office in the home and a key to a good office is a door yeah. yeah, yeah. With a lock or without a lock? No, I don't need a lock. Oh, okay, I just, just the need door. a door. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when I shut that door, we know. Yeah. Uh, you know, when the kids were home, it was, uh, uh, you know, the door is shut. You don't come in. And now, if it's just my wife and I, the door is shut. So don't don't talk to me, please. Yeah. Uh, especially in today's world, right, guys? Because uh, we've got you know the different virtual 
ways Zoom or Google Meets or 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 all the other. So yeah. you never know when somebody's in, there's no on air light outside of my yeah aunt, right. So you're talking to somebody and you never know, and then you add earbuds and everything else, and people just don't know when you're on yeah. a call. Yeah, yeah. you so, don't hear or see anything yeah, outside of that's your right. scope, that's right. and then that's right. Yeah. So the door is key. Yeah, very much there like go. that. There we go. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, so, uh, Glenn, how are you doing? If you're checking in today from one uh, to one to ten, on a one to ten, I'm probably a seven. Okay, okay. I'm a seven. I normally run. Uh, I usually run about a probably about a eight or a nine. Okay, I, that's I, good. But you know, seven. I'm a little. I'm a little road weary. Tommy knows. I've been on the road for what feels like forever, and uh, <laughs> I am home. Almost all of July and August, which you know, it's kind of like when you, if anybody in this room has run, you know, any type of distance running. If you're even if you're just doing a 5K, you get the 3K and you you know it's almost done, so you're exhausted. If you do a 8K, you get to four, five, six K, and you're exhausted yep, because yep. It, you see it coming. And I'm kind of there right now, mm. so I, I can't wait till this is done. And uh, this this last road is has been the hardest one, but you know we'll get through it. Now, it's do you are you one of those guys who? You get tired of being on the road, but then when you're home for two months, you get antsy. And yeah, need to get 100%. Back on the road. I need to get back on the <laughs> yeah. road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah so it's I called you, balance. Yeah. I just haven't found it yet. I you're, miss hotels and being alone I, yeah, and yeah, restaurants. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> well, you've retired a few times. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. I've been tired a few times, yeah. and, then, and, and then I just get re-energized, right? <laughs> um, so, Glenn, is there is there something that uh, you're willing to share with your- I'll share um, anything. With, uh, with our listeners. Yes. Yeah. Um, was there, what was like the darkest point of your life where you you were you had to seek out some help? Yeah. Uh, whether it was through friends or therapy or yeah. just acquaintances acquaintances. Right. Um, is there one specific or you had multiple ones and which one would you like to share Probably with us? Probably two two main times I can think of. It was uh, still when my boys uh, were at home. Life is supposed to be great. You know, I'm I'm a general manager at a uh, at a very successful uh, auto dealership, you know, life is supposed to be perfect. So financially, you know, great. I was with, uh, um, I was with my uh, current. I was going to say with my wife at the time. I don't know where the hell that came from. Uh, Ooh, let's yeah, hope she doesn't listen she's to not, this. Edit, edit. Uh, Mark that. Yeah, current wife. Always has been the wife, first wife. <laughs> one and only. The one and only. Um, yeah. So everything was sort of that perfect scenario where I was supposed to be super happy, and I couldn't figure out why I was feeling, I now know what it is. I didn't know what it was then, but I was so, so anxious, like incredibly anxious. And I remember it was a trip to, uh, I was going on a, on a factory trip of the, of the auto store. And I was in the Toronto airport and I got so overwhelmed. I just couldn't stand it. And I literally had a panic attack, which I didn't know that's what it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was yeah. wrong with me. And I ended up sitting down in the Pearson Airport. People are walking around me, and it was like I was watching a movie as they're going by. I had no booze in me, no drugs in me, no nothing in me. And it was just like I had no idea what was happening. I didn't know if I was having a heart attack or what. And it's amazing, right? Uh, <laughs> for you Toronto people out there, you're not you're certainly not prairie people because nobody stopped to see if I was okay. Yeah. Uh, and then that sounds like Pearson. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I got through it. I breathed my way through it, got up and you know, those bookstores, I don't know what kind of bookstore it was, but in every airport, you know, have those yeah. books. Yeah. So they had a, a display pushed out a little bit and I looked and it was just the, it was just the earth talking to me because I can't even make this shit up. If I tried, there's a book, it was called from panic to power. Okay. Okay. And I just looked at this book and I was like, what? I grabbed the book. I walked straight to the till. I paid for it, got on the plane, read a lot of it on the plane, didn't leave my hotel room for a gala that night, finished the book. And that book changed my life. Oh, wow. Right. And I already had a, a coach at the time. His name is Bob. He's no longer with us. He passed, but I talked to Bob about it and he said, yeah, it's anxiety and this is what's going on and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I had no idea, but it was the scariest time, right? Because mm -hmm. the guy, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I thought I was crazy. Um, and uh, there's so many things that had happened. So then I started that journey, um, if you will, uh, to avoid these these feelings. And it was feelings like where I, 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 what, I didn't deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. And then I got anxious. I couldn't sleep. I was sleeping, you know, three to four hours a night max. 
uh, heavy pressure in the job that I was in because you have to hit targets and numbers and all those yep. things. And just everything felt like it was crashing around me and I couldn't figure out why. My life was successful, but personally I wasn't successful. And when I was happy, I would think of something to make me not happy. Mm -hmm. It was just bizarre. It was like I was just destroying myself. Yeah. Right? That cycle of self sabotage. It, it was crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not good enough. This and that. Donna shouldn't be with me. My kids could have better dad. You know, the dealership mm -hmm. should fire me. You know, yeah. all that shit. Right. And yet I kept getting promoted. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it it does, was, it when was you're weird. in that, it doesn't. You don't no, see it. It's yeah. not it doesn't sensible. matter. You don't no. see it. You're Crazy's not, not sensible. You're not. You're not thinking. You're reason. <laughs> you're trying to reason with yourself, but you're unreasonable. Yeah, it's ridiculous, <laughs> right? And then the scariest part about it for me was the issue. My biggest issue was with me when I was sleeping, when I was awake, when I was in the shower, when I was happy, when I like I was wherever I went. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't yeah. get away from me. That's right. Right. So it's the shits. Right. Well, and when you are the the dependent thing to carry you on, it's really conflict. It, it's fucked. Like it's pretty conflicting in that sense. Yeah. That so. You said you had a coach, so talk a little bit. Like, and I know now you are mm -hmm. you you do that. So, do you yeah. want to uh, give us a little backstory to that and how you yeah, ended so, up there? So, I was a uh, I was pretty much a, a crazy, fun party guy growing up as a teenager, and my mom was always <laughs> my mom was always kind of worried because my brother and sister were actually good kids, um, <laughs> and and I was this is my story. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> I think it's all of our story. Yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> My, no, my brother was not good. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Anyway, this guy, he's a family friend. And, uh, you know, he had his, you know, psychology degree. And he was a counselor in school system and stuff like that. Not our school system, but he was a family friend. And I don't know, he, he just started taking me under his wing. And uh, I was probably 17, 18, maybe even a little younger when he came into my life. And uh, uh, he was certainly instrumental. I mean, he was everything. He was closer to me than pretty much anybody on the planet. My grandfather and him were my two biggest uh, mentors, male mentors. I mean, I'm sh certainly my uncles were close to me too and stuff, but I won't bore you guys. This is only a half hour so or, or 60 <laughs> minutes or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, that was who took me through uh, and started to teach me you know, okay, if this is the way you want to be and you don't want to be medicated, I just didn't want to be medicated. I, I didn't even take Tylenol. I've never done drugs in my life. The only, only drug I ever did was alcohol. Um, and uh, when you grow up in the prairies in Manitoba and the farm, I, I don't even know if beer is alcohol. Actually. I don't, I don't yeah, think no. it counts. No, no, I, don't I don't think it counts. I don't think it counts. No, I don't think so it counts. Can we all agree in the yeah, room yeah. that it doesn't yeah. count? I had, I, had my, I had my fifth, no, 16th birthday party in a local bar in rural Manitoba yeah, yeah. with a cake yeah. that said happy 16th. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like anybody was hiding it. Yeah, <laughs> It's rural Manitoba. It's a different yeah. place. Especially different them. breed. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, it would have been funny if there was a fake ID printout on there, right? <laughs> So but other yeah. than that, but so I was scared of putting anything in my body and I'm certainly for the listeners out there, don't be, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you have a doctor and they recommend anxiety medication, depression medication, of course, take it. I think, but I'm going to interrupt for, for me, one second. it didn't. So I, we see a, a, I think we see a fairly significant increase in those types of medications being issued and being mm -hmm. prescribed and this and that. How much like you're, you're definitely, I think all of us believe in a certain sense of our own will and drive to overcome right aside from that and so where do you see medication fitting into that because you said you didn't want to yeah and so i don't want to tell people don't do no, it. no i'm like, not no, telling no, that at all no i don't think yeah. we should i think if that is like there is chemical imbalance there are things in 100%. your brain and yeah. in your body that are misaligned that need alignment and there's a place for that i have friends and and we're gonna have a couple that are guests that without that treatment that part of their treatment 100 they wouldn't be here today and so I've had, you know, my one friend puts it really great. He says, the medication I take allows me to be receptive to the healing information that I need to get yeah. to mm -hmm. get to a better okay. place. I love that. I love That's that. That's how he speaks and, about it. And for it, me, you know? I've been fortunate that I didn't have to do that. But I certainly, when I coach people, you know, the high percentage are uh, medicated in some way. And, yeah. that, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, that's okay. I mean, uh, nothing wrong with that at all. My wife would allow me to say this she she takes medication um you know for mental health and and that's fantastic right i mean if that's what works for you i decided to go a different route i decided to try it bob said okay let's try it on your own and and this was right after this incident of reading that book and that was the first clue to me that reading helps me mm -hmm. so it's part of my check sheet every day that i do so i read every day 
Uh, I meditate every day. So this is what I call the natural medication for me. So meditation changed my life, uh, eating properly, uh, trying to get more sleep is important. And that's always been touchy with me. Well, my mom used to joke when she took me home from the hospital, I never slept through the night and I'm still not sleeping still don't through do it. it. Yeah. So yeah. I never figured <laughs> that skill out, but uh, that is important. And the, one of the cool things that really uh, came to me, I want to circle back to reading in a moment, but what when I learned how to journal, that was so important to me. It was like, ha- it's. remember I said I couldn't get away from myself? Yeah. Yeah, so when I'm journaling, people go, Glenn, I don't know how to journal. I'm like, really? Interesting. Um, do you own paper? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have a pen? Because you could literally write on there, hockey game, great last night. S- saw my buddies, like beer, great. Yeah. Fuck, this sucks. No, it doesn't. It's great. I don't care what yeah, you write on yeah, the page. Yeah. You're just letting your thoughts hit that page. And I actually have switched from paper now because so much travel. I end up leaving my journals in a hotel room mm-hmm. and I might get arrested if somebody reads them <laughs> just for my own safety. No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, I use an app now okay, um, and, yeah. and it works unbelievable. And, uh, and journaling has been just so, so, so important. Um, do you give yourself a timeline like for X amount of time I'm going to do like kind of like a deep work thing where it's correct. like I'm going to do this for 60 minutes a day or 100% okay. my book my book is called Master Your Life to the 10th Degree oh, yeah I have it actually right there and Can there, you, do you want to grab it just we'll show it on oh, the camera Tommy has it here there you go yeah it's a very good it's, book. And it's the only one sold. Absolutely. <laughs> Come on, Actually, he, he didn't pay for no, it. I no, you're right. I gave yeah. it to him. <laughs> so God. this is a book. Yeah, pick it up. It's awesome. It's a really good read. So I love it. Uh, yeah. So long story short, uh, yes is the answer to that. And then the other, so you can break it out what works for you. If you only got 30 minutes, break it down. Um, and, and I'm not as dialed in on that as maybe as I used to be because it's just... Now it's just like my cadence, right? Yeah. It just becomes, it's like breathing. I don't even think about it yeah. anymore. Before I went, no, I got to do this for 20 minutes, this for 20 minutes, this for 20 minutes. You know, well, yeah, it's just so like any so habit, right? You have to force it at first. Eventually 100%. it'll become now natural. Now if I yeah. don't do it, it's like weird, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just part of it. I have a quick question about the journal. Do you, did you, um, what did you use it for? Did you actually reread what you wrote down uh, more yeah. often or just once? Or what did you use that I've for? I've never re- reread it. Okay. And my, my wife rereads all hers, and a lot of people I coach, they reread theirs, okay. which is cool. There's nothing wrong. That's the point, though, Tommy, and mm-hmm. I love that question, right? Because it's your journal. Yeah. So for me, I just need to puke what's in my brain. Yeah. yeah. Get it out. Get it out of there, right? So if it's hockey and it's the playoffs or if it's I'm pissed off at my one of my siblings or, you know, if my neighbor drank all my beer or whatever it is, <laughs> um, <Don't> you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, or, or you're, you're, you know, uh, you know, you're dealing with your, like a lot of us that are listening, probably there's a lot of dudes listening to this, obviously, um, is our relationships, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, whether that's if you're married or, you know, whatever your situation is, um, you know, great things come from that and great frustrations come from that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, Absolutely. so, you know, I'm, I'm writing about that a lot and then, and then moving on. Um, I don't read back, but a lot of people do, mm-hmm. uh, which is hilarious because sometimes I'll actually connect pictures to it through my, oh, okay. cause it's a, it's yep. an app. So you might wonder, well, what the fuck would you put pictures on there for if you're never going to look back? <laughs> I don't know. It just felt like I should throw the picture on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, who so knows? Maybe one day might, you will look I might back, look right? Back, so. right? Well, and so. it's, uh, it reminds me of what, uh, McConaughey did with green lights. Uh, great. He actually went yeah. back and opened up all his journals and right. he'd been journaling for ever. Mm-hmm. Right. That's and he went back book. and he took time and like actually dug into them and built this story out of it. Amazing. Yeah. And, and, that and, book and, is and maybe great. that'll happen. The book's fantastic. If you have not, if you can only, only have one book to buy, do not buy mine. Buy <laughs> green lights. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, play, I'm plugging someone else's yeah. book when he's sitting <laughs> across from me. It, it, I don't know. It's seriously, a it's a great book. Yeah. Really. Okay. No, seriously. And it, it is. if you don't, like if you don't read books, the audiobook is good. He reads yeah. the audiobook. Yeah. I've done both now. And okay. listening to him tell it is I could listen to him probably read any book, yeah. but yeah. um it's just just it's good information. Read it. It's so mm-hmm. good. I and really the, enjoyed it. And that's the thing about books, right? People say to me, Glenn, um, I don't like reading. And yeah. I'm like, Okay, you could do audio, but I'll tell you why I like reading. For anybody that's listening to this that is ADD and I'm diagnosed ADD. Well, they diagnosed me from the fucking hallway. Like I didn't even have to go and yeah. see the doctor <laughs> with that kid. Holy Christ. So, uh, but, uh, so ADD and what it, reading helps me focus. 
believe it or not. And Robin Sharma taught me that. By the way, if you, if you don't know who Robin Sharma is and you're suffering from mental health, read every single thing Robin Sharma writes. Okay. He's amazing. Let's we'll, put, uh, we'll put a link put into it in the podcast. Yeah. He's, he's unbelievable. I don't care what it is. If Robin Sharma wrote it, it's fantastic. Okay. Um, but Robin took you through, and I've been fortunate enough to meet him. He took me through the check marks on the side of, of the book. So imagine everybody out there that's reading goes, I can't concentrate. Like I get halfway, we've all done it, right? You get halfway down the page and you're thinking about the ball game tonight or the date yeah, you're yeah. going to go on. Are you or, reading like, the same page yeah, six, six times? times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got to pick that's up, some, I gotta pick up yeah. some Crown Royal. Like I'm, yeah. I forget what I'm doing, right? <laughs> so when you do that, he, you know, just put a check mark on the side page and then start at the top. Mm-hmm. And then you say, okay, try it again. And then you'll get three quarters of what, and I'm talking about myself now, I'll have like eight check marks on the side of the page. And then you can see the next page is three and then there's two and then there's one. And then there's no check marks for a while. And then you can see where I started again the next day. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. there'll be five check marks you on the page. It, you okay, hit yeah, yeah, yeah. a pace and, and, then you, yeah. it, and you're gone. So yeah. it teaches you focus. At least it did for me. So that's super yep. cool. The other thing is people ask me, what should I read? Listen, I think that there's not enough positivity in this world. I think we bitch, moan, and complain about the weather, the economy, the rates, the politicians. Yeah. We we just love to bitch. I mean, that's just it, and yeah. it pisses me 100%, off. Yeah. So some people find it difficult to hang with me because I, I don't want it. I want, it, I want a negative-free zone where possible. Mm-hmm. So my grandmother used to say, garbage in, garbage out. And when we look at what our kids watch today, what are what we watch as adults, our, our feeds, and I challenge people, check what I'm following. I don't care. Um, I'm not following, you know, unless you count the Maple Leafs, they always lose. So I guess that is a little <laughs> negative. But, uh, but the the you know the positivity is so important. So going back to it, I'm ADD. Don't worry, I whistle. The dog comes back. Read positivity. That's what I tell people to read. Read positivity or read biographies of successful people. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that that works, right? So I'm again, I'm a rural Manitoba kid, right? So my favorite line is, if you stand in a barn long enough, daily, for hours at a time, eventually, you are going to smell like the barn. I don't give a shit how much you shower. I don't give a shit, how, you know, you scrub. You're going to yeah. smell like a barn if yeah. you're there long enough. Same as negativity. If you hang yeah. around with negative people and you just pump in negativity to yourself all day long, well, guess what? Eventually, whether you think so or not, you're going Absolutely. to be negative. Well, and by the time it happens, you don't even realize That's it. it. That's it. Because well, most people don't have self-realization. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know? yeah. Uh, I, you probably might remember, might not from our conversations, but that was one thing where um, I, that's when I started getting really unhappy at my work is when I just went into work and constantly heard, ah, fuck this place. I hate this place. And it was a lot of negativity. And I became very... Um, very negative about it's toxic, it. toxic, man. Very toxic. So I had to make some changes, and thanks to your help and uh, lots of conversations over that too, um, it's been it's been an interesting journey for sure. Yeah, I mean, nobody's perfect. I'm not no. saying I'm never negative. Come mm-hmm. on. I mean, everybody's going to be negative at some point yeah. or another, right? I mean, but at the end of the day, the you know, it's like anything. The more po- – <laughs> The less negativity, the best, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how to say it. You'll never have zero. I understand that. But that reading part, again, I go to that. If you read positivity every day and you start your day that way, yeah. I'll tell you what, right? And then at, th- at the end of the day, you can read your John Grisham or Clancy or whatever the hell you're reading. Yeah. That's fine. But I like to start with positivity. So you start your day with reading? Yeah, 100%. Okay. I, I usually start, like this morning, I was reading at quarter to five this morning. I was reading about some cool stuff okay you're positive. you're the you're the early morning guy i i do like being up early yeah um you know what i feel like it's just such an advantage again robin sharma wrote a, an amazing book called the 5 a.m club and uh it's guys it's like anything right if you if you're used to getting up at eight o'clock seven thirty, whatever your time is and you think tomorrow you're going to start at five you will fail like yeah. it's it's oh, yeah. it's baby steps, right? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. at seven thirty now. I've, start I've getting had up that at I've had that pipe dream before. I'm gonna yeah. get up at five o'clock yeah. every day this week, and yeah. then day two, it's like uh, six is probably okay, yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. right back to where I was. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> and that's okay. I think, but I think like you talk about positivity, and we talk about challenge and this, and it's about the pursuit of it. The reward, in, the reward is the pursuit of it, and to continue to pursue it mm-hmm. because right. it's not easy. We're bombarded by negativity as you said like all day every day everywhere we go we are bombarded by it and you can't always pull yourself out of that situation physically you can't always just walk away i mean you you always have a choice but you know you have a job you have a negative work environment you have a toxic work environment 
you worked in the automotive industry. I come from the automotive industry. My whole life was in the automotive industry. And that is a, there's a lot of different up and down in that world. 100%. And it can beat the shit out of you and it can beat you down really bad. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent, and and there's lots of um, industries out there that'll do the same. And to your point, it, it's it is a choice, but reality is reality. Yeah. So I always say that if I can start my day by surrounding myself with that positive, you know, shield, then I'm good to take off each day and get hit by negativity because mm-hmm. I will in the first five minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, the first person that talks to you, hey, did you hear? Well, yeah. <sighs> Oh yeah, well Dick is banging, and she's and did you hear that? Oh my god, and she got fired, and he did, and it's like yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, did uh, anybody was there like any good happen yesterday? Yeah. Nobody ever wants <laughs> to talk about that. Tell me something good that happened. Like, in yeah, your yeah day. like how about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that's one reason why I don't have uh, cable, and I don't really watch the news because. What do you do? You hear good stories. Maybe one out of every twenty stories is a positive story. You know, but it's always killings. Negativity uh, yeah, sells. Like, yeah, exactly. Negativity yeah. sells. Buddy. I like to. I, I like to pay attention to it, but I don't do it in the mornings. So very good point, right? Yeah. Like, let's start the morning. Well, positive. You said, what, listen, read your Grisham and your Clancy yeah. and whatever else. In the evening, yeah. after you've had some time to build up your defenses yeah, a little bit. That's right. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Mean, it's almost like point. you said, set a standard to your day that way you are, too, right? You are yeah. setting a standard, right? And then yeah. and then in my book, I talk about the life bus. And, and you know, at the end of the day, if people just can't be positive and they always want to do it, then you just got to stop, open the door and say, get off. Yeah. And that's not easy when it's no. a brother or a mother or a neighbor or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know what I always say, though? You got to either change them or change them. Yeah. Right, it's yeah. a hard thing to do. Oh, it, and nobody said it was easy. No, right? Because <laughs> anything worth it is typically not easy. Yeah, should it shouldn't be. Right? Yeah. Like the, you know, what, what's like the uh, you know? There's dads in the room here, right? Yep. Raising kids is not easy, but it is the most rewarding thing on the freaking planet. Yeah. You know, I would never, ever, ever, ever change it. And then eventually, you have a grandchild, and then you can spoil the shit out of them. Which <laughs> oh where man, my, my son is pre- my my son is not pregnant. Let me take that back. <laughs> uh, I, I love that when they say that though. Like, We're pregnant. No, you're not. No, you no moron. Just one. Your <laughs> wife's pregnant. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be a grandpa soon, and then all the all the girls. congratulations. All, yeah, well, that's it's exciting. Be all the, oh, bud. Like yeah, yeah. talk about good for your mental health. I'm well, going to spoil the shit out of this. Well, kid. you're you're spoiling my son every yeah, once in a while. That's, that's hilarious. Right. He's, yeah. he's practicing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting ready. Make all the mistakes with my son. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the pizza oven is dedicated to the highest quality pie that the whole family can enjoy. With their amazing sauce and freshest ingredients, the pizza oven is here to provide quality and a great tasting pizza to Winnipeg and East St. Paul. They use a delicious blend of mozzarella cheese, make the pizza crust daily, both thick and thin, and their meats are proudly provided by Winnipeg Old Country. They're located at 1215 Henderson Highway, Unit D in Winnipeg. Visit their website, thepizzaoven.ca, and order online, or give them a call at 204-949-3000, because everyone's loving the pizza oven. You said there was two things. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's one, my second one. So that was my first one. That was the anxiety deal. Mm -hmm. Um, It was, and I and I have something specific called catastrophic anxiety. So Mm -hmm. you can Google that and look it up. Okay, it's literally your, you know, everything that comes into my head. Like you had a bad day at work, you're losing your job. Yep. Right. Uh, Go to the extreme. Everything's the extreme. Right. Donna says she has a headache. It's a brain tumor. Um, You know, it's just bizarre. Mm -hmm. And you know, and you work through it. Um, the second thing I found out is when I lost my give a shit factor, I call it. And, uh, it was, uh, not that long ago, about, um, maybe eight years ago, I literally, anxiety was under control. So for me on a scale of one to 10, I love that you guys do that. Uh, 10 being the worst for anxiety. My best zone is about a three. Okay. Right. And, and that can spike from one day to another, but typically if I hang around a three, life's good. It's always there. It's like my dad yep. explains about his back pain. It's always there. It's just whether it's bearable or not, right? Yep. So, but the second part that Tommy said, what is one or two things? And for guys that are out there, I am just begging you to get this checked. Life was great. No anxiety issues. Don't know what's going on. I'm on a golf course, beautiful golf course here in Winnipeg called Niaqua. And it is a beautiful It golf is course. a beautiful And I'm, I'm teeing off with a very dear friend of mine, Dave. And I'm like, he's like, what's going on, man? I said, Dave, I don't give a shit about nothing like nothing my stores are all doing well by this time i'm president of a, of a group and they're all killing it don't give a shit 
Um, Dawn and I are in a great place. Don't give a shit. The only two things on the planet that I actually get excited or give a shit about are my two sons. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I literally had no give a shit factor. And that just wasn't me. And this has been going on for six, seven months. So he says to me, well, have you gone to the doctor? I said, for what? What am I going to do? Walk into my doctor and say, hey, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Yeah, I, don't my lungs? I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor, right? Put a glove on. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, so, at the, so what is it? So he, he said, no, go check it out. So anyway, he ran it and found out that my testosterone wasn't even on the, wasn't even on the charts. Mm-hmm. And I thought testosterone meant, and I, I think I can say it on this show, yeah. I thought that meant is I couldn't get it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that wasn't an issue, and 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 that part was not an issue. So sexually, I was not affected, but everything else, I was. And mm-hmm. I I didn't realize that testosterone truly is a gas in our tank, right? For yep. boys, right? Yeah. So he just looked at it and said, "Dude, like this is bad." And I can't remember the readings anymore. I'm not a doctor, mm-hmm. but um, I have to take an injection now uh, every three weeks, and it's amazing, guys, because I feel it when I'm like I don't even remember when I do it, so. I, Donna puts it in her phone to remind, right? I'm like, oh man, I'm feeling kind of like it, best analogy: a hundred watt light bulb. Okay, take it out, put a forty water in. There. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how I that's feel. That's how you feel, yeah. So I'm like real dim, and I'm running like, low. And Donna goes, oh yeah, your shots due in uh, tomorrow. Like that's how I know. Yeah. It's so wild. Yeah. Um, but that changed my life, Tommy. Like now I get the injections. It's totally changed my life. For, like the acid. So guys, if you're feeling that way, go get checked. Mm. Well, you and I. Ch- talked about that yeah. when I was at my low and uh, I actually went to the doctor and same thing I don't remember the numbers but let's say between 10 and 20 you're okay and mine was like a 10.5 and so doctor's like ah oh, don't worry about it you know like you're fine and I'm just like okay but like shouldn't I be in the middle it's like oh as long as you're on the chart you're fine so um you know I went through few other things with uh, with my doctor as well but I want to go back actually get it tested again and just kind of there's another great book about that improvement. if there's guys yes. out there and I, Tommy I lent it to yeah, you I can't yeah, remember the did. name of it now keep it up I think it's called it's a female doctor she's a leading expert yes, on testosterone North American wide I believe it's called that I'm sure Tommy can find I'll it but um, great book on that they, they tell you why your doctor makes a mistake when he tests you as well so mm. I brought the book to my doctor oh really oh yeah uh, great guy, and uh, and, it, and it worked out. And by the way, not everybody's going to need shots or creams or pills. It, you can do a lot for testosterone with food you eat as well. I was just too far gone. Diet and lifestyle is probably a huge, huge part of it. Huge, yeah, yeah. huge. Yep. I'm, sure, I'm sure my smoking and drinking isn't helping any of that. But. I don't. I didn't yeah. see that on the list for doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I know, like uh, you've helped me with some uh, uh, getting my life together a little bit with also exercising as well i uh i'm lucky enough to uh just hop over and, and use your gym uh, which i haven't done in a long time but i know i'm i, I will get back to it i will back back get back to it but just uh, i'm not there yet well you lost weight um, and you just told me outside that's next I did, steps yeah it, it's, <laughs> you're, lose, you're losing weight yeah. <laughs> no actually i think what i said is like i'm not doing that <laughs> you did say that but you've already said it out loud that you need to so that's a but i do and, and i just remember like um Always hated hated going to the gym. It's just it was like, ugh, I gotta go. But that was the hardest part is actually getting my ass off the couch yeah. and going to the gym. Once I was there, I put on a show, did my twenty, thirty minutes, and I felt amazing after that. Like, you know, it's just like, why don't I do this more often? The next day again, like, oh I don't feel like going. So it's kinda like you mentioned the routine. Like yeah. we just we have to force it, and eventually it becomes part of your life. And I you need been, it, Tommy. I've been working out now for I don't know, I forget, fifteen years maybe. Religiously, I don't miss a workout. Always minimum four, usually five days a week. Minimum four if I'm traveling. But I got to tell you, I hate going to the gym every fucking time. I mm-hmm. hate it. Yeah, I've never liked it. I think people that love going to the gym are crazy people. <laughs> they're insane. Uh, they're insane. Yeah. They're, I don't trust them. I don't trust them. I don't trust. I don't trust people like, that like cilantro or go to the fucking gym. <laughs> okay, okay. Those are the two whoa, people whoa, I don't whoa, like whoa, in the whoa, world. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, <laughs> cilantro is no, fantastic. No, see, that I, might be. I, I, that I might don't end, trust you. That might end up being the most controversial topic we have on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but the best part uh, of a I workout, got the book. it is keep it up. Yeah, keep it up. The power of precision medicine to conquer low T and revitalize your life. It's unbelievable that book um i got it through men's health but back to the workouts you know what i'm addicted to 
the best part of a workout is the shower after. Yes. I feel, I look in the mirror and I feel like I'm ripped. Nothing's changed, yeah. by yeah. the way. Yeah. I, I look in the mirror and I'm like, yeah, I'm a pretty big deal. Like I just worked, I just yeah. did cardio on a, on a fucking treadmill for 40 minutes, mm-hmm. but somehow that makes me more ripped. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. then I get into the shower and I get out and I go, look at me. Yeah. Like Absolutely. I practice what I preach. Yeah. Oh my God. And well, I feel and like a million and bucks. And you're starting, you're, you're walking out the door feeling like, like a, million a million bucks. bucks. Yeah. Or what yeah. I do now for those of you that don't sleep, my doc suggested it. And it's helped me again. There's many things you can take to go to sleep. Um, I don't like taking Tylenol. I've already said that. Yeah. It's just my personal thing. So I started working out at the end of every day. So sometimes, so my book talks about the mornings, which by the way, I still think is the best idea. Why? Because nobody calls you for fucking wings and beer at 5 a.m. Nobody. <laughs> That's right. yeah, no Unless way they're out. really psycho. Yeah. So, so, and if they are, you might want to consider maybe not having them as a friend. I might just but, call you tomorrow before yeah, your flight. That's yeah. right. But, <laughs> That's a change them, change them situation. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If you got change them, change them. But back to this. If you do it at the end of the day, um, that's the danger of the end of the day because so many things get in the way. Can you pick this person up? Can you meet me here? Yeah. The or family or whatever That's right. Is, Lots right? of shit happens, yeah. right? But if you're just crazy, crazy committed to it, I always I like to work out somewhere between, depending on my day, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. And then... It burns off the day, which I never thought of. It really does. You go brain dead, you you hit the elliptical or whatever your your choice is, and you put your buds in and away you go. So that's really cool. But my doc was right. I actually sleep better at night. That just works for me. So if somebody hasn't tried that and you want to try it, I, I, I do sleep better at night because of it. I don't stay asleep at night. That's I can my fall asleep too. like super fast. But I cannot stay asleep. I'm up and my brain's racing. Flying. And then I got to write shit down and try and get enough of it out that my body goes, okay, you can go back to sleep now. I, I think part of that is a, it's real like mo- a lot of it for me is related to work and related to my businesses and the stress of that and the entrepreneurial thing. And yeah. like a lot of that plays into that for me. That's my struggle with 100%. staying asleep is my brain just doesn't turn yeah. off. Yeah. I just, I have a hard time turning it off and it keeps going while I think I'm sleeping and then I'm awake. And have you tried CBD oil? I, yes. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, I can, found cannabis that helped is, me a little bit. Yeah. Cannabis is like, I own two cannabis yeah, companies. I knew that. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, cannabis is always a good starting option because yeah. it's not pharmaceutical drugs. That's right. And yeah. so why not give it a shot? And so yeah. I've actually this last week been trying something, a new cannabis product and I'm only on day, what is it today, Monday? Yep. Yeah, so I'm Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm like on day three right now, and I'm going to give it a month. I, I decided I'm going to do this thing for a month. I'm going to try it every day twice and see if it affects my sleep and things. Because it's going to take more than two days. Yeah, to yeah, yeah for it's sure. Yeah. Going, but right? I'm, very, I'm, I'm doing my own little experiment with it to see if I can stay asleep. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's you, so hard. Are you monitoring your sleep somehow? I used to use this app. I think it's called Sleep Cycle. And you're supposed to leave your phone uh, on the side of the bed. Um, That'll and, stress me out. I can't do that because I'll know it's there. And then yeah, I'll wake up and so, then I'll wake up and I'll go, ah, oh, fuck, I'm going to look at I, my uh, sleep <laughs> stats for last. I used to use it. Yeah, I used that be- because uh, I used to work nights. And then uh, dur- during the day, like I would sleep for eight hours, but I would wake up exhausted. I'm like, what the hell's going on? But sure enough, it was like, uh, you know, at whatever, like 10, 10 a.m., I interrupted my deep sleep and then there was a missed call on the home phone at 10 a.m., you know, and just these little things that kind of woke, got, got me out of the deep sleep. So it was nice to just kind of see where I'm waking up and why I'm waking up, why it's being interrupted. So I don't know if there's anything at night that's going on. I know you used to live in, or you might, your house might be haunted a little bit too. So <laughs> yeah, you never I, know. I think everyone's house is haunted. <laughs> no, I don't know what it is. I just, I can't, I yeah. have a hard time staying asleep. So mm-hmm. I'm trying different things. And, it, and I'm a little bit like you, Glenn. I don't, I really don't want to get into the medications if I don't have to. No. And I just, I, I always believe for myself that I can, I can find a way to correct it through other means than taking medications. And for me, it's like lifestyle. Like there is 40 things on my list that I need to try before I'm going to go, okay, maybe 100%. this is something else. Yeah. But I just, that to me, that is personally, that's my last resort. Yeah. And th- And in my whole life, I've never had to go there yet. That's great. Well, it's good that you can actually recognize that you can try to help yourself somehow and and try it out. Some people don't have that option, right? And they need to go straight to the medication. Well, like which is my fine, like my but, uh, my tea, right? Yeah, it was past food. It was past working out because I was doing those things already. Absolutely. Yeah. So now it's a real pain in the ass, yeah. literally, because that's where I take my <laughs> shot. Uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, but you know it's worth it now. Absolutely. So. No, I, I love that. Um, as a life coach, mm-hmm. um, you've given me lots of great tips and and suggestions, and just kind of I lo- I love how you're uh, you're very honest and straight shooter. Mm-hmm. You've called my bullshit out many yep. times, and and I love that about you. Um, what is what what is this something that you can? <laughs> what my is some- favorite is what he's. <laughs> What he said, uh, I can't work out today because I'm tired. I went, oh, is that right? I went, no, it's because you drank last night. Yeah. You fucking yeah. you get your ass over here and get it on the treadmill. Yeah, and, well, actually, you elliptical. made me feel like shit, so yeah, I'm yeah. tired because well, you didn't have to work go. out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I loved it. Yeah, no. Uh, what is something that you you would um, you could kind of recommend to people to um, do when they're feeling really low and, and lost? In whether it's relationships or, or like well, I had a relationship issue and you really helped me with yeah. that. Um, well, I, always, I, always, but I know you've dealt with other other issues sure. as well in the, in the, in the past. And what could you recommend to our listeners when they're feeling down? Um, well, I, I, okay, that's super broad, it, uh, yeah. but you know, depending on what it is. But I always say, you know what? If I'm having problems in a relationship, let's start there, right? I want to seek advice, right? I'm not too worried about credentials on a wall because I have none. Mm-hmm. I'm more con- I'm more concerned with credentials in life in that area. I.e., if somebody's been divorced four times, I might not be taking my fucking advice on relationships from them. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a terrible idea. Maybe they got a lot of great experience. From they can that, tell you right? what not to do. Yeah, bingo, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, like I wouldn't take singing lessons for somebody that can't fucking sing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It doesn't yeah. make sense yeah. to me. Like, would you go to a personal trainer if they're 75 pounds overweight smoking a cigarette? No, no. So I, I might. My, 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 <laughs> yeah, you're kind of working. Yeah, you're like, I like this guy. Like I'm sitting on the chair like, and the treadmill's underneath, right? It's like taking golf tips from your buddy who hits two strokes better than you. Yeah, like that's stupid. Just, uh, yeah, or, yeah. or score has a higher handicap, mm-hmm. right? right? Like it's yeah. it's crazy. So my first word of advice is get advice. That's my first word yep. of advice. And then my second thing is you be careful who you are taking advice from. Mm-hmm. Just because you love. Bob or Betty does not mean that Bob or Betty really gives great advice in mm-hmm. this area, right? Like I wouldn't take money management from somebody that's living paycheck to paycheck. Because yeah. remember, in, like I talk about in my book, I talk about big rocks. Everybody's big rocks are different. They're not all the same. Yeah. So I don't take that brush and go, Whoa. no, it's like, what's important to you? Well, I want you to write it down. I want you to take pieces of paper, write the name, what's important to you, throw it in the middle. And let's crumple them all up, pull one at a time and say, okay, relationship. No, my relationship's amazing. I have sex four times a week. My, you know, we chase each other around naked all the time and we love each other, never had an argument. Okay, well, that's not an issue. Next, right? Financial, fuck, we're broke. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm paying credit cards. I'm paying this. I'm scared to answer my door. Okay. Okay, well, let's get advice here. Probably not from somebody that doesn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw yeah. it out of, yeah. right? Let's talk to somebody that understands that and, and 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 sort of gets that deal. So my advice is A, get advice, and then B is make sure we're careful where we're getting that advice from. Mm-hmm. Even my coach, right, there were certain things where he would say, and any good coach, by the way, will say to you, uh, don't know, but I'm going to find you somebody that does. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like mm-hmm. the... Like, People like to say life coach, and that's fine. I'm more like air or air traffic control with no airplanes. Um, because when you come to me and say, hey, Glenn, uh, I got this. I'm like, I don't know anything about it, but boy, do I have somebody that knows this yeah, shit yeah. really, really well, and I'm going to get you in front of them. Mm-hmm. And we just kind of you know, guide those planes so they land properly or take off properly, metaphorically speaking. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, you, you've, again, like I mentioned, you've helped me tremendously you helped me guide me to the right direction like you've you've given me great advice and you've always uh always again love your honesty uh so i really appreciate all those years i know my wife reached out to you once Mm -hmm. uh, as well because she didn't know what to do with me (laughs) she told you that i didn't tell you that (laughs) no no no. yeah 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 (laughs) she did yeah and uh i I was actually very happy that she did and um, i'm very very uh, fortunate to have you in my life um I really I talked about your uh, circle with the black dots on the show. Um, could you explain it yeah. a little more? Because um, maybe my version wasn't as clear, but I, I would love it if it came from the person that actually 
put it in his book. Yeah, and let me tell you where it came from for me. Um, I remember <laughs> people are going to laugh. It's got a serious. It's a serious process that I take people through, and it simply, as Tommy said, is you take a white sheet of paper, like I've got in front of me now, you dial a circle, and it doesn't matter if you folks can see this, you can imagine it, you dial a circle on the, draw a circle on the white sheet, and then you just take a pen and you go, okay, let's let's list out all the shitty things in our lives right now. Well, I'm pretty sure that my wife is leaving me, okay? Put that down. My, my father is, um, you know, dying of cancer and there's you know it's stage four well yeah that's horrible let's put that down as a dot what else oh i hate my fucking job okay put that one down good what else anything oh not really i think i'm pretty happy with everything else and you know pretty good so there's nothing else no so i said okay and i reach up and i go what do you see i tell everybody that i'm like what do you see and they go i see a circle I see, no, they tell me, I see three black dots is normally what they tell mm-hmm. me. And I go, oh, okay. Well, what if I told you that I see a bunch of white space and then these three black dots? Nobody ever says that. Mm-hmm. The white space is the positivity in your life. The black dots are the problems. Why did I think of that? I was about 16 years old. I just had my driver's license and I had this big zit on my face and I got I had a date that night and I was so excited now this wasn't a little zit this thing looked like a crater and it had a white head on it it was <laughs> like it was awful and then I tried to pinch it so it went purple we've yeah, been there right we're yeah, 16 yeah. I'm just thinking I want to you know I'm 16 we all know what I wanted and and so <laughs> popcorn I, I, yeah popcorn yeah. at the movie that's what I wanted yeah. so I had to get my sister's my sister put makeup on me and we did the whole thing but Again, you look at that face, and not in my sense, but everybody else has probably a beautiful face, and I was worried about that one spot. Mm -hmm. And that always stuck with me, Yeah. Mm. right? And now it's like the same thing. We focus on that freaking spot. Even if it's one issue we have in life, we can't shake it, right? Well, and I I would feel like that spot, whatever it might be, is the whole circle. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it's it so be. much bigger than it actually because, is. Right, exactly. You got to see through it, right? Yeah. So it's it's and and that's kind of uh, sort of leans into uh, what Robin Sharma calls opposition thinking. So that pops into your head whatever's bothering you. Dad's dying of cancer, which is freaking awful. No, but you're not a doctor. You're probably not going to be able to cure him. So what's our alternative? Well, we can ruin our day and everybody's around us because we're so sad, or we can have opposition thinking and say, wait a minute, dad had a great life up until this point. Hopefully he doesn't suffer. And think about all the great things you did with your dad or take all the things you learned from dad and say, I'm going to apply that with my son or my daughter or whatever. Or my, we didn't do this with my dad. I'm not going to make that same mistake. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting today. I'm going to go out and boom. So it's opposition thinking. And, um, and I love that. And this saves me all the time. I'll literally flying on a freaking airplane and go like this on a piece of paper in front of me because I'm teaching myself again because I'm like everybody oh, okay. else. I just like, yeah, that really bugs me. But what about everything else great in my life? Uh, yeah, I yeah, guess. Well yeah, said. I, I used to do like just write out pros and cons of what yeah, I'm like, going yeah. through right now. Yeah. yeah, but like then I just get almost lazy or like, I don't feel like writing it all out. Right. So well, maybe you know why? Because be you have too many pros in your life and most people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a fact yeah. by the way. Cause I when would, you really start, so. right. Yeah. We start thinking about it, right. We're the three guys in this room right now. We, we could literally go for the next three hours without hesitating oh. on the positivities in our lives. Absolutely. Yeah. But that doesn't sell. Right. Yeah. And that's the problem. And then, but we get focused on what's not right. And see, it shouldn't be perfection, guys. Life, mm-hmm. life is not about perfection. It's about progress. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Well, and I think it's, yeah. And it, it's, again, the the volume of the cons list always, it's almost like if you made a pro, pros and cons list, the cons list you did with a thick Sharpie and the <laughs> pros list you did with a pencil, like yep, a dull right. pencil. That's and right. It, right back just, to that black feels, dot. It right? feels so much bigger. And I think... A lot of what you've talked about today is so much about shifting your own focus. And we hear that a lot, but you're doing it and you, you've been through that. And I'm assuming your book speaks to that yeah. and really focusing on that positive thing. And it sounds cliche, like everyone says it, but you have a positive result and you've created or, or facilitated a positive result with a lot of people by doing that. Right. Get up early. 
do something good for your brain. Start your day positively. Go th- watch the outcome of that. Like it, it can be. I want to say it sounds simple. No, it is simple. That's yeah. why I, I can do it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty much a moron. <laughs> um, it took two years just to edit my book. It usually takes 24 hours to edit a book, but I can't yeah. spell, so that, that was part of the problem. I mean, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Can we talk about your next book? I know you're you're working on one. Yeah, uh, it's ironic. Uh, like- it's ironic because uh, the next book is going to be called. I, well, at this point, it's going to be called uh, "When." Hmm. I like that because you just alluded to that, saying, "You know what? Uh, everything you said is really simple." Do you know how many times people say to me, "Glenn, I'm going to do this." It, it, it doesn't even have to be this. Like, yeah, we're going to get together. I can't wait. We're going to get together. We're going to do this. When? Yeah. Or you know what? I'm going to get healthy. When? I'm going to buy a treadmill. When? I'm quitting this job and I'm doing that. When? Right? I'm going to talk to her. When? Mm-hmm. So the whole book's about execution. Whew. Right? Because I'm sort of tired <laughs> of people telling me shit. Yep. But, you know, I came from a freaking- I'm guilty as well. You know, yeah. I'm born and raised in a trailer in you know rural Manitoba. And I'm still listening to people I grew up with telling me what they're going to do. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, just go do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, while you, everybody waits for, it just pisses me off because we wait for the perfect situation. Well, I'm pregnant at, well, I'm not. My wife is. We went through this yeah, before. Right. Right? Uh, <laughs> See, it sounds and, like you're still struggling. Yeah, with it's, the it's hard to get that. <laughs> it's, I told you, I'm not too bright. Uh, so we're 19 years old, right? And uh, no education, mm-hmm. right? And then- it's this, this isn't about me, but I don't do what I did without that execution piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go fucking do it. Yeah. And that's when you were saying to me, Glenn, you called me out on my bullshit all the time. Everybody I've coached, I'm going to call you out on your bullshit. Yeah, you, it, would, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, like I'm just like, no, you told me. We talked about this. Mm-hmm. That's like a contract to me in the business yep. world. Yep. Yep. No, that's not an option. You told me you were going to do this four days a week minimum and five days is the bonus day. Yeah. So I don't give a shit if you ever hit your bonus day, but you better never miss four. That's right. Yeah. And how long should a 30 minute cardio session last? Oh, I don't know. 30 minutes. <laughs> not, not 28. Not yeah. 28. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be 31. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, know, but I, it needs to be 30. Yeah. I remember you told me it's like 30 minutes and try to hit like 500 calorie burn or whatever. I used I'm to call just, that one more call. Oh, a lot of people oh. have seen my videos. I call that one more call. Yeah. And so I remember you, I had like 480 and it's like 30 minutes is up, but I don't have that. Okay, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah. Because I have like, 480 uh, calories. I, I might as well get the 500. I called you lots of names. Yeah. But, yeah you did. So does Donna. What? Yeah. And yeah, Donna does the same thing. <laughs> but it was worth it. So yeah. I loved it. Yeah, I'm excited for that book. And uh, if you'd be willing, when it comes out, we'd love to. I'd love to read it, and then I got to actually have finish it. That's well, why I find it ironic when? that it's called when. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's only like now there's more people, but yeah. I got a ton of people that just close friends are like Glenn. When? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it a lot? I mean, it is it. It is a lot easier to give up on accountabilities you have to yourself than accountabilities you have to somebody. That's else. right. When mm-hmm. I promise my wife something. I'm fucking doing it. And we talked about that when we first started dating because her daughter, who's now my daughter, my stepdaughter, she's my daughter. Yeah. And she said, and I I didn't really know about being a parent. I I had been raised by great parents. I love my parents and they, I think they did a great job. Tommy might disagree. Um, (laughs) And a lot of other people, but. (laughs) um, but Including your parents. I haven't been, yeah, including (laughs) my parents. Well, that's their fault. Um, But I haven't, but what she said to me is she said, don't make a, com- just don't promise her anything you're not going to do to my daughter, Autumn. And I do the same with her. I do the same with, I, I try and do the same with everybody in my life. I cannot make a promise, but if I make it, you're goddamn well, I'm keeping it. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's kind of along the, the self accountability thing is really easy to give up on because you're promising to yourself and yeah. nobody knows if you don't make it. Yeah. You want to, you want to do something and you, you have a diary date on it. Tell someone. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, that's what happened to me when I when I quit smoking, right? I made a mistake of telling somebody I was quitting smoking. See, if I'd have just done it to myself, yeah. 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 I wouldn't have had to quit. Yeah, yeah. Now, now yeah. I quit, and it's been many years. I know when we air everything on the fucking, on the other podcast and yeah, this yeah, one, yeah. and so everybody knows what I'm promised to do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's Sucks. right. Yeah. Don't it's do great, that. actually. It's really good. <laughs> but Tommy, to, answer, to get to the final answer, you said to me, what is my number one advice when you're feeling down? Get advice, mm-hmm. which really means reach out. Yep. 
Like, don't do it alone, right? Don't do it alone. That's insanity. Absolutely. And, you know, you, and that's why we have, you know, a lot of mental health issues in in the world, but specifically here in Canada. I mean, our suicide rate is too high, and oh, and it's, it's there's insane. a lot of reasons for it. But one of the reasons is certain people are embarrassed; they don't want to reach out. It's just and and men are we're idiots, right? Yeah. Um, because yeah. we think it's a sign of weakness. Yeah. It's not a sign of weakness. If you, no. it's a sign of power. If you've got people that you can actually call, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that don't, I mean, there are, you know, Google it right now. There's numbers you can call. Absolutely. Um, but right. Um, yeah. and, and that's so, so important. So the number one advice I have for anybody that's feeling down is get advice, which is an- yeah. another way to say, reach out and yeah. reach out right away. Yeah. Right. Well, we've talked about this and like when Tim, <clears throat> he made that call right away the next day, whereas myself, it took me four months to call the mm-hmm. therapist because part of maybe our upbringing, yes, you're a man, you're not supposed yeah. to show. Suck it up. Yeah, yeah, suck it up, you know, just deal with it, yeah. right? And I didn't know how to deal with it and, you know, talk to friends. Um, but to make that initial phone call for for a therapist, for me, was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. In my life, yeah, it, it's, and I'm I, and now I'm kicking myself in the ass that I didn't do it earlier because I loved every minute of it. Good, yeah, you know, so. and that's a great message to send to people. Mm-hmm, that you loved every minute of it, right? Yeah. So we talk about that a lot, and and at the end of our show, Glenn, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, I can't wait to get you back. Yeah, anytime, guys. It's my pleasure. To and, when your uh, book is out, when your book's yeah. out, or whatever, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> when. Um, <laughs> We always do talk about contacting us or, or, or reaching out. That's kind of how we close all the time. And so don't hold it into yourself. Like you can message me, you can message Tommy, you can email us at quiet riot show at Gmail. You can talk to your, talk to a close friend, talk to anybody who will get you started in that process. And, it, it, and they may not be the person that follows you through it, but the, tell somebody, say something, you have to say something. And it, I know it's scary and it can be take, three seconds to get the words out of your mouth and I promise you it will work towards something better. Absolutely. Right. And Tommy, I should mention real quickly because you, I didn't know you were going to bring the book up, but uh, the book is no longer uh, for sale because as you know, I just recently uh, changed what I'm doing. Yep. So the site's down. So if they okay. want a book, what they should do is email you guys, sure. your listeners, Absolutely, email you yeah. guys. And Tommy can um, get them a book um, and uh, work it out. It's called Master Your Life to the Tenth Degree. And uh, Glenn Damon, thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me, fellas. Thank you. Um, do you have a little present for you? I don't know if you collect coffee mugs at all. Absolutely. Ooh, I love coffee. If he coffee. did, he'd need a second house. <laughs> Probably yeah, but we got you a little present. Um, it's a, it's our oh, I it's love our it. mug. Appreciate it, gentlemen. So you can we'll keep it in your office. office. That's yeah. where I'll put and it. Right then, uh, office. Perfect. Hopefully that's uh, you know, it's it's. A, I I just want to get get our guest a little present to hopefully that you had a great time and thank you again very much for oh, coming and sharing your experience. And yeah, hope to see you on here again. You bet. Thanks, man. Okay. Cheers. All Quiet Riot Show episodes have been recorded and produced by Suver Media. If you think you have an idea for a podcast but don't have the space or proper equipment, please visit suvermedia.com for more information. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit the follow button and leave us a review if the platform you are listening on allows you to do so. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Quiet Riot Show, and follow us on the Instagram page, at Quiet Riot Show. Please share this episode with others that may be interested in these topics. If you know anyone that would enjoy these topics, feel free to share our podcast with them. Also, let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Get in touch with us in the comments on our channel and social media, or send us an email to quietrideshow at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.